For my flipbooks recently, in the last few weeks, I've used these four different types of paper. I've used regular printer paper, which is the cheapest. I've used purpose-made flipbook paper, which is the most expensive. And I've used two different types of card that I bought from Hobbycraft, um, which is a craft shop in the UK. One's called Craft Card and is a little bit cheaper, and one's called, well, I've called it Luxury Card, but it's the thickest at 180 GSM. So first thing to talk about is the price. Now, printer paper is, is half a penny, works out half a penny a sheet. That's assuming you cut each A4 sheet into um, eight. Uh, you've got your flipbook, which is most expensive, 1.85, so that's almost four times the price. And then these two in the middle at 1p and 1.4. Um, personally, I've, 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 I favour the craft card at, at 1p, and I'll, I'll come on to talk about that in a moment. Um, the flipbook's great if you can afford it. Um, it's, it, it, feels, it feels really nice, uh, and it flips perfectly because it's, it's cut to just the right size. So I would say if you're on a budget, printer paper or if you just want to practice or start out or if, if you're at school and you haven't you haven't got much disposable income I would definitely suggest the printer paper um, if you can if you can afford it or, or stretch to it then I would I would suggest either of these two. Now the second thing I want to talk about is is the actual flip itself. So this is the, the printer paper which is the cheapest. So you can see it skips a little bit um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit blurry because the pages are so thin. Now this is the 120 GSM, so it's half again as thick, and you can see how how much nicer it's a bit blurry, but how much nicer the image is. There you go. This is the craft card. Not too much blur. A lot nicer than the print paper. And then this is the thickest card. So in terms of the flip, these three are all are all pretty nice actually. Um, the flipbook is probably the nicest, but that's that's mainly because of the size um, and the fact that it all lines up beautifully as opposed to the thickness of the paper. If you look at the the purpose made flipbook paper, um, you can see how it it's a little bit out of focus, but you can see how it's perfectly lined up, which means when you're flicking it, it's you're not missing a single page. Now, when you're when you're cutting it yourself, it's virtually impossible no matter how good you are at cutting to get it perfectly aligned so you do miss the occasional one when you're going through it so that's that gives the flipper paper the advantage over the other three now what i would say is if you are cutting it make sure that the edge that your thumb is flicking through is the factory cut edge um, and anything that you've cut with scissors or, or a guillotine is is on, on this edge you can see i always mark it with a, a a bit of pencil um, just so that I remember which which side is the um, you can see some of the some of the frayed bits there this is this craft card that I buy this is a good little trick actually if you if you want to if you do want to keep the cost down remember this is almost half the price of the the flipbook paper this actually comes in an a6 pack like this um, it requires one cut down the middle. So for each of my pages, that is a perfect edge, that is a perfect edge, and I usually put the perfect edge along the bottom. So I've just got my cuts along the top. So if you have a look at this book, you'll see that the pages aren't all perfectly the same height, but that doesn't matter because this edge here is perfect, that's perfect, and then the edge along the bottom is perfect. So I've got three perfect edges there, which means that it flips nicely, um, which is which gives it an advantage over these two, which I've cut from A4 paper. So I would say, in terms of flippability, this is the winner, followed by a, this is a close second, and then these two are, are quite in, in a distant joint third. So final test, we're going to see how how good they are to trace on. So I'm going to line up the paper in terms of 
thickness. So we start with the 80 grams, and we work our way along to the 180 grams. Now if I press down, you can see the line here. Um, you can see how it's really clearly visible through the thin paper. And then as the paper gets thicker, um, it gets progressively harder to see. The, the two in the middle are, are 120 and 160, and they're pretty um, similar. The, the one at the end, which is the 180, which might be slightly harder because the, the paper is slightly cream, but actually I think 180 grams is just too thick to, to be able to see through. So I would say if you're making uh, if you're making a flip book, I would avoid something in the really thin range over here at the 80 and try and stick within this 120 to 160 if you can. Four types of paper you can use. They've all got their pros and cons. We've got the, the from the cheapest at half a penny a sheet to the most expensive at 1.85. Um, I would say my overall recommendation is avoid this one, it's too thick. If you're on a budget, just use some printer paper, cut it really carefully and make sure that your factory edge is down this side where your thumb is. Um, if you can um, stretch to it, then I would try and get your hands on some A6 card like this. Uh, in, in the UK, I get this from Hobbycraft. It's get 50 sheets for a pound, so that makes 100 pages um, at one page. Um, or, or if you can justify it and afford it, um, you can get these purpose-made flipbook um, books. I, I get mine on Amazon. Um, and they work out at 1.85 per sheet. Thanks for watching. See you next time.